Hello, welcome to my channel, I'm All Things Wrestling and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on WWE Raw, 11th of June 2018. We kick off the show with all the Raw superstars going in the Money in the Bank ladder matches on ladders in the ring. Kurt Angle makes his way to the stage, he reminds us that Money in the Bank is this Sunday. For the first time, the ladder match will feature four people from each show. It's the most grueling match in WWE history. I think Elimination Chamber and Alan the Cell would want a word with Money in the Bank about that statement, but... Let's not go there. Um, it will test you, but the winner will get a chance to cash in any place or any time. Baron Corbin, who has a really nice new haircut, by the way. You should look it up. Very, very short. I like his new look. Uh, the constable of Monday Night Raw said he represents Stephanie McMahon. He said to make sure Raw goes smoothly. Kurt said he would love to see the contracts come to Raw. Baron says... If they don't come to Raw, Stephanie will be disappointed. And he doesn't want to disappoint Stephanie, does he? Uh, first logical point I'm going to pick up on here. Um, why would this be Kurt's fault if they don't get the contracts? It's not like he's in the match. Is Stephanie that deluded that everything failing on Monday Night Raw is all his fault? The woman needs a reality check from The Miz. Uh, but yes... Uh, then we have a back and forth with Alexa and Sasha about last week. Uh, then Natalia's like, I'll grab the contract and get a title match against Ronda Rousey. Sasha said she'll do it. Uh, then they're all like, I'll cash in, I'll get it. Um, and then Kevin's like, I have something much more important to talk about. The match is not fair. Braun is so much taller than we are. Uh, should, we want the briefcase raised for him. Um, and... Bobby's like, should it be lowered for you then? And he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. And then um, Braun's like, I'll do something to you then, Kevin. He's like, you're going to throw him? He's like, that's a promise. All four men said they're going to win until Alexa screams loudly to make them all stop. Then Alexa's like, Braun's going to win. Sasha's like, Finn's going to win. Finn's like, Sasha's going to win. Braun's like, someone's going to get these hands. Uh, it was an alright opening segment, actually. I did enjoy it. All these ma uh, top stars in the same ring was really, really cool. Baron did a nice job undermining Kurt Angle and definitely getting the law of Stephanie McMahon on his side. I do like that fact. It is pretty damn good. Um, this led us to our first match. Alexa Bliss versus Ember Moving versus Natalia versus Sasha Banks, which, as you can tell by the caliber of women in this match, it was a pretty decent opening match. Um... Good back and forth, everyone got their good shots in. A lot of near fit covers, a lot of like a few jumps outside. Good match uh, ethics. Uh, uh, the win happened when Natalia managed to get the sharpshooter on Alexa and then she tapped out. Really good match. Natalia's got some good momentum going towards Money in the Bank now. Please don't let it win. I don't really like Natalia, but good win for her anyway. Then we go to Kevin Owens stopping by with Finn Balor giving him some olives for an olive branch. Saying we should take out Braun Strowman. That was pretty decent. I enjoyed it. It was quite entertaining. Uh, Kevin with his comedy stuff is quite good. We then go to our second match. The Fashion Please versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. Um, there wasn't much of a Bazango offense in here. Um, the win happened when... Ziggler, distracted Fandango, manages to crotch him on the top rope. Uh, Breeze comes off the turnbuckles, caught by Drew. Drew power bombs him into Fandango. Uh, super kick on Breeze, zigzag, and then claim off the three count. Uh, decent match. A uh, very decent match. Looking like Drew and Dolph are pretty decent. I'm liking giving them momentum at the minute. The Fashion Police. I do love the Fashion Police, but unfortunately, they've not got much place to go at the minute. But these two are very, very red hot at the minute. My heart read out. Either way, they're very good. Uh, they do do a promo after. They said this isn't just hype. Um, uh, they tell every tag team to take a good look as the show starts and ends right here. This is your future. Everyone's future is in their hands. They're going to save this division and take every other team out. I'm going to put my logical point in here now. If you take everybody out, there's no division. You can't save the division by taking everybody out. That doesn't work logically. It, how the hell does that logic work? 
Seriously, I'm going to take everybody out to save this. Yeah, logic doesn't work there. Uh, then we have a backstage segment with Roman Reigns saying that Jinder cost him his match to the money in the bank. He's going to whip his ass. He's about to get his receipt. Jinder's like, Roman's just a habit. He ain't going to be able to keep up with me. He's going to get taken out by Coloss after Coloss. He's going to get his arm raised on Sunday and expose Roman. Um, before the match starts, Jinder's like, your new opponent is not me. It is the great Sunil Singh. Yes, he trolled us. He really did troll us. As you can tell, Jinder was scared. Roman got a Superman punch. Spear. One, two, three on Sunil Singh. Which was nice to see that little bastard get taken out because I hate him. After the match, attacked by Jinder and Coloss. Um, I'd like to mention at this point, uh, the announcer said if Jinder does this on Sunday, he will be victorious. That means one Coloss equals six F5s, according to their math. Because surely you take multiple Colossus to take him down because it took multiple F5s and the F5s coming from Brock Lesnar, who's a much more physically intimidating athlete than Jinder Mahal. Just... Logic point number three there, guys. <sighs> Man, might make this a thing. Uh, then we go to our uh, next match, which is Heath Slater and Ron Evers, Kurt Axel and Bo Dallas, the B-team. Um, Rhino had made a t-shirt for Heath Slater that said, Rhino made this, and it was a really cool t-shirt on Heath Slater. There's another thing on the show that was new and that was awesome. Um... It was an alright match. The B team managed to get a neck break and belly to back suplex for a three count. Pretty decent match. I did enjoy it. I like seeing the B team get momentum. He's staying right now. Again, another dead, a dead tag team that I actually did enjoy. God, God, don't be uh, Then we go to Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt on the Titan Tron, applaud their victory, and said, The celebration is wonderful, delightful, and sublime. They are here. They appear on the stage. They tell the obsolete mules, well done. He says, beware, because they are omnipotent. They are surrounded by the Woken and Fireflies. They are watching you. He knows your insides are burning like the river sticks. That is fear. And he put it there so they could remember that they purchased the ticket. Now they have to go on the ride. He said, "This will, when this is finished, they will eat you and delete you. Yes. Um, that was a lovely promo. Absolutely amazing. I'm loving the team of Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy at the minute. It's so good. Uh, it's just so good. I can't wait to see the match. I really hope the B team do pick up a victory there on Sunday and get the tag team titles because they are amazing. They really do deserve it. They've turned their careers so much around over the last year or so. I really am happy how they are using Kurt Axel and Bo Dallas at the minute because them two are very, very good talents. Uh, then we go to Elias backstage. He said he's going to do his best performance. Uh, it's going to be a struggle for him, though, because he's not used to performing in front of a bunch of Arkansas hillbillies. He's back in the ring, sings a obnoxious song as usual. He then brings out a new guitar made by John Mayer that has the Intercontinental title on it and his name. He said he'll play his greatest song next week and have this across his chest and his continental title against his waist. Seth then comes out. Um, they have a bit of a brawl, but um, Elias gets dumped out over the top rope. You have a few back and forth with Elias saying, don't break my guitar, give it to me. Seth's like, no. He said, I can play a song. It involves three words and putting my foot to the mat. And then he curb stomps the guitar, destroying it. Don't get me into the logic of why a heel is tactic is being used by a face but what are you going to do it, it was a good segment Seth Rollins had them on the palm of his hand during this whole segment seriously he could have been there for 10 minutes and people would have still eaten it up just teasing destroying this guitar it was amazing uh, then Kevin Owens tries to get Bobby Roode on his side to take out Braun Strowman which was alright then we go to the weirdest segment I've seen in a while to lead up to a match Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad going around throwing snacks across and then they cut one of the production workers' ties in half. I don't know why, 
but it happened and it was weird and it was amazing. Um, then Ruby Riot faced Bailey. Uh, distraction by Sarah Logan, I think it is. Yeah, Sarah Logan. Um, Ruby sends her into the ring post and Riot kicked the three count. It was alright. It wasn't too bad of a segment. I did enjoy it. Ruby Wright needs to get some momentum. I do think she's got a good potential. I don't feel like Sarah Logan or Liv Morgan will have much of a potential in WWE. But definitely Ruby Riot. Then Ronda Rouse is getting ready to go to the ring. Natalia Stottard says don't take your eyes off uh, Nia. Good advice. Then we go to Jonathan Coachman in the ring. Brings out Ronda. Brings out Nia. They talk about how their friendly rivalry has turned to anger. Nia says, I've been pushing the buttons to try and see what reaction I could get. She then talks about the rules that are different in MMA and WWE, whereas in WWE you can headbutt, do shots to the spine, pull hair, that kind of stuff, where you can't do it in MMA. Ronda says she doesn't have a game plan. She improvises and she improvises her arm off. Her coach brings up the fact she's only had one match in WWE. Um... And then Nye brings up the fact it was a part-time wrestler, Stephanie McMahon. Um, she said that Ronda's not ready. And Ronda's like, people said I weren't ready to get the women's title in the UFC. But now here I am going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Nye tries to punch Ronda. Ronda blocks it. Nye tries headbutt when Ronda tries to get the armbar in. She manages to get the armbar in and Nye just taps out. So pretty decent looking there. I think this match has got a lot of hype going into the pay-per-view. I am so hyped to see this. I really want Wanda to win. But then again, I do want Nia to win. It's it's a debate. It really is a debate what they're going to do here. Then we go to... Um, Kurt Hawkins seeing No Way Jose's conga go past him. Then there's a match between the two. Hawkins doesn't come out. The referee starts the count. Um, the Kurt Hawkins gets in the ring dressed as one of the conga line people rolls up uh, Jose for a near fall pop up forearm from Jose three count Kurt Hawkins is 201 I'm loving this whole Kurt Hawkins losing streak thing it is pretty damn funny it really is I, I, it's just entertaining I, I like it he's getting over by being a loser somehow and I don't <laughs> best to him. He's liking it, I guess. He said he does it because he enjoys performing. Uh, then we go to another Bobby Lashley and Sami Zayn segment. He sets up a optical course because he says people have shown pictures of Bobby in the military, but he said that's not enough proof. If you can do this optical course, then maybe he is. Uh, Sami Zayn said he did it in one and a half minutes when it normally takes people two minutes. Uh, Bobby then comes out. He wouldn't. Um, Sammy won't go anywhere near Bobby, uh, even for the twin costs. Um, Bobby gets to go first. He completes the course in 42 seconds. Uh, Sammy then attacks Lashley from behind, sends him to the scaffold, and then hits the Aluva kick. Really good segment. I love the off the wall kind of stuff that WWE do like this. I mean, it's not the norm, which is what I love so much about this kind of stuff. It's so entertaining. I, I hope Bobby Lashley wins this rivalry and goes on to bigger and better things. But it's his first singles rivalry and it's quite entertaining. I am enjoying it. Uh, then Kevin is going through game plans with uh, Finn and Bobby. And they're like, we didn't even agree to anything yet. Calm down. Uh, then they go out and they uh, start taking out Braun Strowman all together. He does fight back a lot, nearly taking all of the guys out, but they managed to get just on top of him, um, put him on the announce table, frog splash from Kevin Owens on a ladder, taking him out through the announce table. With uh, Kevin and Braun Strowman out, this is a fair hallway match, by the way, did I forget to mention. Um, it leaves Finn Balor and Bobby Roode left to fight in the ring. A lot of back and forth, Braun Strowman managed to get up there. Um... Weapons get involved, taking out Braun Strowman. He blocks a ladder shot from Kevin Owens, grabs him by the throat, choke slam, power slam, three count. He stands tall over everybody at the end of the show, which is a really decent show, actually, for Monday Night Raw. I'd say it's a solid 7 out of 10 rating for a Monday Night Raw. It was one of the best I've seen in a very long time. 
This main event was good because it gave Braun Strowman a lot of strength. He kept beating everyone up. He even survived like three finishes from everyone at one point. He's looking like a dominant beast, which is what you need to do with Braun Strowman. You've got a moneymaker right on your hands here, WWE. Do not mess this up. He is going to be huge in the industry. He really is. You've got to make sure you do this right. He is going to be bigger than Kane. He's going to be bigger than Andre if you can book this right. He really is. He's that damn good. That damn popular. He's just like Andre but better. Because he can wrestle. Oh, I love Braun Strowman. But yeah, I'm do um, I do hope you've enjoyed this. This is a bit of old content which I'm trying to bring back and see how it works. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any ideas to make this better, please let me know. Please subscribe to my content. And support me on Patreon, link in the description below. Subscribe to see more content, and I'll catch you later. Bye!